Imagine the world's most iconic airplane, the Boeing 747, the queen of the skies. It revolutionized travel, carrying millions across oceans and becoming the crown jewel of aviation. But Boeing wasn't satisfied. They wanted to push the limits even further. What if the 747 was stretched, made longer, able to carry more passengers than ever before? On paper, it looked like a masterpiece. In reality, it became one of Boeing's biggest headaches. From aerodynamic challenges to airport restrictions and rising fuel costs, stretching the 747 created problems that even Boeing couldn't have predicted. Before we dive in, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. On this channel, we uncover the untold stories of aviation, the triumphs, the failures, and the decisions that shaped the skies. If you love airplanes as much as we do, you won't want to miss what's coming next. Now, let's go back to the Boeing 747. By the late 1960s, the jumbo jet had transformed global air travel. Airlines loved it because it could carry more than 350 passengers across long-haul routes with unmatched efficiency at the time. The flying public adored it because the 747 felt like stepping into a flying palace. Spacious cabins, iconic upper decks, and that distinctive hump that made it instantly recognizable. The 747 was more than an aircraft. It was a cultural phenomenon, the very symbol of the jet age. But Boeing had a problem. Competitors were catching up, the Douglas DC-10 and the Lockheed L-1011. TriStar promised airlines a new level of efficiency and lower costs on medium and long-range routes. Airbus, a rising European competitor, was working on what would later become the A340 and A380 families. Suddenly, the 747 risked being seen as old, even though it was still young. Boeing's response was bold, stretch the queen. By making the fuselage longer, Boeing could add more seats, more cargo, and promise airlines even greater profits per flight. They envisioned variants like the 747-300, and eventually the massive 747-8 Intercontinental. To Boeing's leadership, it was a no-brainer. Why not take a proven platform and simply scale it up? But here's where the cracks began to show. Stretching a jet isn't as simple as adding extra aluminum to the fuselage. The longer the aircraft, the more stress it places on the wings, landing gear, and fuselage structure itself. Engineers had to redesign critical components to ensure the aircraft wouldn't twist or flex dangerously in flight. And with every stretch, the airplane became more difficult to handle on the ground. Taxiways, runways, and even airport gates weren't designed for such a massive jet. Still, Boeing pressed ahead. The first stretched versions, like the 747-300 in the early 1980s, looked promising. Airlines could pack in hundreds more passengers, giving them the chance to dominate transatlantic and trans-Pacific markets. But another storm was brewing, literally and figuratively. Fuel prices were climbing, and airlines realized that filling every seat on a stretched jumbo was harder than it looked. Flying a half-empty 747 was financial suicide, and smaller, twin-engine jets were starting to prove far more efficient for most routes. The dream of stretching the queen of the skies was turning into a nightmare. When Boeing rolled out the stretched 747 variants, expectations were sky high. The 747-300, introduced in the early 1980s, promised greater capacity and a more efficient upper deck layout. On paper, it was exactly what airlines wanted, more revenue potential per flight. Yet the reality of operating such a massive aircraft quickly revealed challenges that weren't easy to solve. The first issue was airport infrastructure. The original 747 was already pushing the limits of runway lengths, taxiway widths, and gate designs at many international airports. Adding extra fuselage length only made matters worse. Some airports simply couldn't handle the stretched jumbo. Parking spaces had to be modified, boarding bridges had to be extended, and in certain cases, runways weren't long enough to allow for a safe takeoff when the aircraft was fully loaded. This meant airlines couldn't always use the plane to its full potential, limiting the routes it could serve. Then came the economic reality check. 
The aviation industry of the early 1980s was a far cry from the boom years of the late 1960s and early 1970s. The oil crises of the 1970s had permanently raised fuel costs, and deregulation in the U.S. meant fierce competition and razor-thin profit margins. Flying a half-full 747-300 was often less profitable than flying a smaller, fuel-efficient twin jet like the Boeing 767, which entered service around the same time. Airlines realized that while the stretched jumbo looked impressive, it wasn't always the most logical financial choice. Another problem was passenger demand. The 747-300 could carry over 500 passengers in a high-density configuration, but most airlines struggled to fill those seats consistently outside of peak travel seasons. A flight from New York to London might sell out in the summer, but during the slower winter months, airlines were bleeding money, flying near-empty giants across the Atlantic. Operational efficiency was also an issue, the Stretch 747 required more crew members, more maintenance hours, and more fuel per trip. Airlines discovered that bigger didn't necessarily mean better when it came to balancing their books. Even routes that traditionally favored high capacity, like Tokyo to Los Angeles or London to Hong Kong, started shifting towards smaller, more versatile jets that could fly with fewer passengers and still turn a profit. Perhaps most damaging of all was the psychological shift in the industry for decades, bigger aircraft symbolized progress. But by the mid-1980s, airlines and passengers alike were starting to value efficiency, frequency, and flexibility over sheer size. Suddenly, the stretched 747 felt like a relic of an older mindset, a reminder of when airlines believed growth was unlimited. The truth was dawning on Boeing. Stretching the queen of the skies had created as many problems as it promised to solve. Despite the setbacks with the 747-300, Boeing wasn't ready to give up. The company doubled down on the idea that the queen of the skies could still dominate long-haul travel, if only they made her even better. This determination gave birth to the Boeing 747-400, introduced in 1989. The 747-400 was more than just a stretch. It came with advanced avionics, a glass cockpit that reduced the number of required pilots from three to two, and more efficient engines that extended its range. It was a technological leap forward, and for a while, it worked. Major airlines like British Airways, Singapore Airlines, and Qantas made the Dash 400 their flagship, flying iconic routes across every continent. But even here, the fundamental challenge lingered. The size. Yes, the 747-400 could fly farther and carry more passengers, but airlines still faced the same difficulty, filling all those seats consistently. And as the 1990s rolled on, the next revolution in aviation arrived. Twin-engine wide bodies like the Boeing 777 and Airbus A330. Thanks to advances in engine reliability, these smaller jets could fly the same long-haul routes as the 747, but with fewer seats, lower operating costs, and better fuel efficiency. Then came the final gamble the Boeing 747-8, launched in 2005. This was the ultimate stretch, longer than any 747 before it, capable of seating over 600 passengers in certain configurations. Boeing hoped the Dash 8 would compete with Airbus's massive new A380, another super jumbo betting on the bigger is better philosophy. Unfortunately, history repeated itself airlines were moving toward point-to-point -to -point travel rather than hub and spoke systems that required giant aircraft. The 747-8 was beautiful, powerful, and technologically advanced, but it was also a decade late to the party. By the time it entered service in 2012, fuel prices were high, demand patterns had shifted, and airlines wanted efficiency over prestige. While cargo operators embraced the freighter version of the 747-8, Thanks to its unmatched volume for oversized goods, the passenger variant never gained widespread traction. Only a handful of airlines, including Lufthansa and Korean Air, ordered it, and production numbers stayed low compared to earlier 747 generations. The story of the minus 400 and minus 8 proved a painful truth. No matter how advanced the engineering, stretching the 747 further couldn't overcome the economic forces reshaping aviation. If Boeing's struggles with the stretched 747 taught the industry anything, it was this. Size is not everything. 
But Airbus, Boeing's fiercest rival, saw an opportunity. In the early 2000s, Airbus launched the A380, the largest passenger aircraft ever built. With two full decks and the ability to carry more than 850 passengers in an all-economy layout, the A380 was marketed as the ultimate solution for crowded skies and growing demand at major international hubs. On the surface, Airbus was doubling down on the same logic Boeing had followed with its stretched 747. More seats meant more potential revenue per flight. The A380 was a technological marvel, quieter, more comfortable, and with unprecedented cabin space. It quickly became a symbol of luxury, with airlines like Emirates installing showers, bars, and lounges on board. But beneath the glamour, the same cracks appeared. Just like the 747-300 and 747-8, the A380 faced serious economic and operational challenges. Not every airport could handle its massive wingspan or weight. Special gates, reinforced taxiways, and longer runways were required. Only a select few hubs could accommodate the aircraft, which limited route flexibility. More importantly, the global airline industry had changed. The rise of point-to-point -point travel, passengers preferring more direct flights rather than long layovers at mega-hubs, meant airlines needed smaller, more versatile aircraft. The Boeing 787 Dreamliner and Airbus A350 became the stars of this new era, offering long-range efficiency with fewer seats and lower costs. The A380, like the stretched 747, relied on the old hub-and-spoke model, where airlines would funnel passengers into massive airports like Heathrow or Dubai, then fly them on super jumbos to their destinations. That model simply wasn't as profitable anymore. Airlines wanted flexibility, not giants that were difficult to fill outside peak travel periods. In the end, Airbus faced the same fate as Boeing. Despite billions invested, the A380 program was discontinued in 2019, less than 15 years after its debut. Emirates, the biggest supporter of the jet, admitted it was no longer practical in a market obsessed with efficiency. The A380's quiet retirement echoed the struggles of the stretched 747. Airlines had moved on, passengers had moved on, and the age of the super jumbo was over. The stretched 747 was supposed to be Boeing's triumph, a way to cement the queen of the skies as the ultimate long-haul aircraft. Instead, it became a symbol of aviation's greatest lesson, Bigger isn't always better. From the 747-300 to the 747-8 and later the Airbus A380, manufacturers learned the hard way that efficiency and flexibility mattered more than sheer size. Today, the aviation world belongs to aircraft like the 787 Dreamliner and Airbus A350, jets that can fly long distances with fewer passengers, lower costs, and greater fuel efficiency. The giants of the skies are now rare sightings, cherished more as icons than as practical tools of modern aviation. But perhaps that's what makes the 747 and the A380 so special. They represent an era of ambition, when engineers and airlines dared to think bigger than ever before, even if the economics didn't always add up. What do you think? Was Boeing right to stretch the 747, or was it a mistake from the start? And do you miss seeing super jumbos dominate the skies? Let us know in the comments below. Your thoughts help keep this channel alive. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more aviation stories every week.